Well, hi guys, welcome back. Now, RV travel has been a pretty popular uh, topic on our blog and YouTube mm -hmm. and podcast. So we asked for what your questions were, as I know a lot of you are really interested into jumping into this lifestyle and are very keen to find out what we think. Well, we have done that already for you in previous episodes. We shared the pros and cons of RV travel based upon our experience of road tripping in a uh, travel trailer here in the US and in a smaller travel trailer in Australia for 18 months. A tiny, teeny, a tiny, tiny one. A tiny, tiny one. <laughs> and we've done some also other motorhome travel in Australia and in Europe. Mm -hmm. And then our other episode was where we shared what we really thought of our RV trip in the US sharing. You may be interested in that, let's just say. So make sure you go and listen uh, to that or watch the video on it as well. So in this episode, we're going to answer your questions about this RV lifestyle. I hope they're easy ones. Simple. Yeah, I'm pretty scared guys. No, uh, questions are good. Easy. We appreciate um, you have questions and yeah, there's never um, a, a too, what is it? Silly question. There's no, no, the there's only, no silly question. The, the only silly, silly question, question is the one, one not asked. <laughs> on you, it's like, oh, I need more, I coffee. I need more coffee. I, I was a coffee. teacher though, so yeah, 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 I yeah. do remember that Pick one. Me, miss, miss. I love my students who spoke oh. to me and asked me questions. And so we love it when you send <clears throat> us questions. Please continue to do that. Whether it's about RV travel or travel in any other style, make sure you ask us questions. Why? Because we've done it in every style possible. Pretty much. But yeah, and if, even if we don't know the answer, we'll... Make it up. Make, well, no, not quite we make it up, but no, we we'll find out for you. Or we probably know somebody who does know the answer. Yeah, so. but we do yeah. know a lot. 22 years now, solo, couple, family, digital lifestyle, expat travel. Mm -hmm. We've done it all. But anyway, shall we jump into it? Yeah. All right, so first question. What would be a best approach to plan a six-month trip? to the US in a camper, a four by four camper. Four by four camper, or like well, just RV in general? Well, I, 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 they've specified a four by four camper. So for me, I would suggest then focus out the West because that's where you're gonna get your most four by four adventures in. Yes. Right, you're not gonna get a lot of that in the East Coast. No, the East Coast is very congested. Um, West Coast, more spaces, more mountains, obviously, um, more off-road opportunities. Um, yeah, like Utah. Mm -hmm. Especially like Utah, it's pretty wild, and um, a lot more space for free camping that too. But yeah, West Coast definitely. Um, yeah, and just decide on the activities that you like to do the most, mm -hmm. um, and you know you don't want to be moving around too much. One of the frustrating and tiring things can be setting up, packing up, and moving constantly, which in involves more planning too. Yeah, so that's just time consuming and, and exhausting over six months. If you're moving every like two days or three days, that adds up. That's a lot of moves um, and a lot of time. Whereas probably want to stay like in fewer places for longer periods of time and dive deeper into the area. Yeah, you can easily like find a place where you can um, stop for a couple of weeks. Like we stayed in Moab, Utah for two weeks. Yeah, use it as a base. It was a great place. There was so much around that area to explore. So it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So write a list of all the activities you want to do, the type of stuff you want to do, whether it's hiking, kayaking, four-wheel driving, um, and then do your research to find out which states will give you that most optimal experience. No point really going down um, the Pacific Coast Highway if you kind of just want to be out in the desert and crawling over rocks and doing all those amazing adventures. Mm -hmm. You could do things like the Pacific Coast Highway, which is extraordinary and very worth doing. But those, I think, are the easy things for you to do in like a short-term vacation. You could just rent a car and do that. I think yeah. if you're looking at the RV, going for an extended period of time, you kind of more want to hit those national parks, state parks, and kind of do and stay out of the cities. The cities is where it gets really expensive. Yeah, and depending on the size of your rig, um, it's hard to find places to stay in the city or to store it if you want to jump in a hotel for a few nights and have a break, which we did. But yeah, that's, mm. that's another challenge, finding somewhere to store it um, while you're traveling in big cities. Yeah, and don't, don't focus on trying to do everything either because no. It will, I know it was kind of like us for Australia, it was kind of, in the end, it was like, oh, just another beach, which when you see the beaches over there in Australia, it's kind of like silly that you're <laughs> kind of a bit like blasé about it. Yeah. But if you're just all the time in red rock country and then that's all you're seeing, you kind of do get a little bit sick of it. So plan for some diversity, 
go to the desert, but then head into the mountains. And then there are some gorgeous regions in the Pacific Northwest as well, if you want more like waterfalls and, and um, rainforests. So again, make a list of those particular, not just activities, but landscapes you want to experience, and then just find the best. Yeah, I mean, like six months might sound like a long time, um, but it can go quick. And the US is a big country. We're talking 50 states, obviously. Um, so yeah, don't try and like go from east to west, north to south and do every state. Um, in six months, you're going to be racing around. So I would yeah. like pick a region like, like the southwest or the Pacific Northwest or, um, you know, uh, another southern part or even, you know, like from California, Oregon, Washington or a few states um, adjacent to that. Uh, yeah, just pick a region and really focus on that. And just go deep. And I think yeah. actually it's kind of a blessing and a curse traveling in the US, but a lot of what you do or plan for will be guided by the weather. Mm. There really is a short we're period of time. About the weather, we are, right? you know, we're Australian, we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> it's who we are. It's our DNA, we we're can't whinges. touch it. We're no, a, I'm we're, not. We're whinging. Are we going to again about <laughs> the weather? We're whinging about the weather again. <laughs> but it's important that we say, I'm not going to whinge about the weather. That's whining in American speech. I'm actually saying it to help you because it is a very important thing oh, to man, consider. Oh man, like if you're really doing your RV lifestyle and you got crappy weather, like it's it changes it. Yeah, you can't. It changes it. It's like not the whole part of doing RV is getting outside and you get up in the morning, sit outside, go and do outdoor activities, sit outside at night time. Mm -hmm. If it's raining and cold and miserable, it's like you, you, know, you hunker down in your rig. It's like yeah, you'd rather be horrible. in a cabin, wouldn't you, yeah. with a glass of red wine by the fire? Totally, more comfort. Oh. But anyway, you might like it. Does it's up to mm. you. But just really pay attention to the weather, and that will guide a and lot of the planning. I think constantly, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. doesn't matter what the season by week by day. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Definitely. yeah, it's hard to. The other thing I guess we want to talk about, like six months. I know it's hard to plan ahead for six months. I mean, it's hard enough to plan a two-week vacation, but you can have a rough idea. Have a rough idea, and the more you can plan and book ahead of time, the less time you can actually be present in the moment and not spend hours every day researching where to go, what to do, where to eat, where to stay. Because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think going back to the weather part as well, you can, I would aim for the southwest uh, region for like spring, fall, because getting there in the middle of summer is really hot. It's very intense heat, it's the desert. Mm. And then for the summer months, you could go into the mountains or the Pacific Northwest. But if you wanna have a warm summer, don't go to the coastline on the Pacific Northwest, stay on the interior. Mm. Or you could also do California. California is one of those states that's so huge and diverse that you can plan around the weather there. Like you can head down south mm. when it's cold um, it's still going to be cooler down there, but you're not going to get snow or anything. Yeah, even in the summer, you yeah. can probably go to the coast, like on, in California in the summer, um, be a lot cooler, but if you go inland in California, you can get really yeah, hot. Yeah, really hot. Um, but it's, it's a huge state, yeah. like, honestly. It's massive. It's massive and so diverse. And then there's the Yosemite in May is a great time. Yeah. So, so find the regions you want to go and figure out when is the best time to go there. You may have crowds to deal with, but... Yosemite in May with those waterfalls. Yeah, obviously you're coming wow. out of um, coming out of winter and snow and stuff has melted. So mm. um, yeah, those the waterfalls, waterfalls are, are raging. Just thundering. Yeah, and I just think because we've been in of, there in the summer, I just think going there in the May with those waterfalls was a way different yeah, experience. Yeah, well, so much better. Yeah, figure out what each park what it's what it's yeah. known for. Yosemite waterfalls. So you want to be there when they're flowing, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hope that answers that answer I the think question. So. That was light. We well, oh, answer, there you go. That was a good one. I hope it was think a good one. Six Actually, months is, when I say it's um, not a lot, it is a lot of time, but it's not. Yeah, uh, it's not. It goes really fast. Mm. Um, I don't know who's, I didn't write down people's names who's asked me this, I'm but sorry. thank you for that. Appreciate sorry, it. I hope that you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how to find places where you can wild camp. Should we explain what wild camp is or boondocking? Yeah, yeah it's, I guess it's kind of a few names. Yeah, well, like you said, wild camping, free camping, boondocking. Basically, that's off the grid. You're not at an RV park plugged into the like city power or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you're out you're in the- Self-sufficient. Yeah, you're self-sufficient. You're out in the elements. You're using solar. You got solar panels or you got a generator mm -hmm. to- um, You got to take care of your own water. Fuel your power. Yeah, there's Waste a lot to- Waste disposal. Yeah. Lots to, uh, a lot of resources to acquire and set up and get um, you know working, but yeah. Uh, yeah. And our best resources were finding it, uh, first of all, other RVers. Well, obviously, yeah. I know a lot. Other people in the 
Talk Traveling to other people around. in the RV lifestyle who have been there and done that, whether mm -hmm. it's you know them personally or there's a lot of Facebook groups and stuff like that too. Um, or read blog posts, search, search online. It's pretty easy to find. Mm -hmm. um, and apps. What's apps, the main Campendium. App? There was a couple, but I think Campendium was the one we used, pretty much relied on in the end. It seemed to be the best with the information that it gave, best kind of reviews and really exact as to uh, where we could find which boondocking spots had Wi-Fi, whether they were too busy, etc. Wi-Fi was important to us because we had to work as we travelled. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find out some really cool information like that on Cambendium. Yeah, yeah. We we mostly boondocked in BLM land, which is mm -hmm. Bureau of Land Management. Um, and another resource, obviously, like park rangers at national parks, chat with them. They're pretty clued up on outdoor adventure and stuff like that, or visitor centre. Uh, you want to make sure that you free camping where it's illegal. Mm. Um, and, and taking and, care of the environment too. yeah and easy, like there's certain rules in place in certain places like you can't camp too close to rivers and dump your stuff here there and everywhere and um, you know obvious signs to look out for is like where someone has been previously there might be a, a fire ring that's been used in the past or there's a clearing that you can tell people have set up their RV or campsite before mm. um, but yeah otherwise just chatting with people who've been there, done that. It's really cool. And we, um, for the first 23 weeks, I think of our RV trip in the US, we did a weekly wrap. And in the weekly wrap, we share the locations of some of the places where we did boondock. We didn't start boondocking straight away because we weren't set up for it. But we did uh, throughout the entire Utah, we boondocked and then through a lot of um, the Pacific Northwest as well. So we do have some of those places. And mm. Utah is the best place for boondocking. There's like almost the entire state I think you can find somewhere. California is a little bit different. Um, places that are highly trafficked, a lot of people coming in and out, it's harder to find a yeah. spot. And obviously the number one thing with boondocking, if you're relying on solar, is you need sun. Mm. So again, the weather comes into play. A lot play. to consider, a lot to consider. <laughs> Um, and also I wanted to mention for Aussies, if you're looking at free camping as well, there is an app. Can you remember what that one was called? Wild uh, Camping, I think it was called. Uh, uh, free Camping. Uh, All right, you're going to have to look at the we'll, description. We'll put a link in there. I just thought of it Show then. Notes. Yeah, I can't remember And either. I'm going to have a look. <laughs> Too much has happened since Yeah, then. but again, um, there was Facebook, Facebook groups. Again, in Australia, we didn't do a lot of uh, boondock free camping because we simply weren't set up no. to be self-sufficient in that way. But friends yeah. of ours were... And um, they used this app, which was really great. So we'll figure that out and put it in the description for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you recommend renting a travel trailer before buying? And this person says, part of me just wants to go ahead and buy, but I like that if I rent first, I find myself not getting so overwhelmed with the idea. Hey, I guess if you've never done it before in any idea. form, whether you've had a travel trailer, a Class C or a Class A motorhome, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess you want to test drive and test the waters. I, yep. think, I think it's a pretty good idea and there are ways you can do it. Uh, one is you can rent through um, RV Share and mm -hmm. also Outdoorsy. Yep, we'll have links in the description or the show notes. Yeah, there are two websites, services set up where you can rent um, other people's, other people's yeah. who own the RV or travel trailer or whatever when they're not using them. You can use them. Mm -hmm. um, Cruising America is another way you could do it. Like that's the more the motorhome style, like the Class C, where it has the um, the bed over the cabin and stuff like that. You get usually a Class Four or Class Six mm -hmm. berth. We've done that a lot in yep. Australia. Um, not so much. Well, we haven't done it at all in the US. No, we think. haven't. We haven't done a motorhome um, here. But yeah, that could be a good way to um, you know wet your feet in yeah. the RV lifestyle. Obviously, you're not going to probably go boondocking or anything in a cruising America, but you're still getting a taste of like RV parks mm -hmm. and the lifestyle. And in Australia, there's Apollo and Juicy. I yeah, think I, maybe in the US as well. Actually, actually. Apollo is in the US. Yeah. Um, they're not huge, but they're growing. But yeah, obviously Juicy, like they're the small one. Like mm -hmm. if you're a couple, little sprinter or something, like, little sprinter and stuff like that. So, yeah, why not? Like rent one for a week or two or longer and yeah. test drive. Um, it might not be the actual one you end up buying, but you can at least get an idea. Try out what you like. the lifestyle. Yeah, because we took one, a motorhome, when we went on the Air Peninsula in South Australia, which was yeah. just before we moved back over to the US. And we knew mm -hmm. that coming over to the US, we were going to do the RV travel. And I think we had two weeks in that motorhome. And then we mm -hmm. were like, okay, we don't want to do a motorhome. Because <laughs> we didn't like not having a separate vehicle. Yeah, to well, your the motorhome. Home. Class C is yeah. the, the motorhome style thing. And yeah, we didn't have yeah. a separate vehicle. And every time you want to, go somewhere in the morning or whatever, you have to pack up 
um, all your stuff and throw mm -hmm. it in the motorhome and off you go. Yeah, so it's personal taste. I think it's a really great way, great idea to do that. You can and try then you out, feel more comfortable with your choice. Like you could try out three different styles. Mm -hmm. Like you could do the Class E motorhome. Um, I guess you can rent a Class A through, I don't even know. I haven't even looked at the site to be honest because we yeah. own an RV. Um, but you could do a travel trailer, a Class A and a Class C and yep. see which one suits your you best, yep. depending on your size of your family, your budget, and the type of trip you want to do. Awesome. Great, great ideas there. Okay, where do you store her, her being Goldie, our travel trailer? Her. Where do you store her now <laughs> that you're not on the road? Where do I store you? Um. <laughs> um, we've got two questions here. So we'll do that one first. So where do we store her? Actually, we have a friend who has a business with a really large lot, and so we're storing uh, Goldie there. Previous yeah. to that, we stored it in the front of a friend. Friends yeah, mind you, our, driveway. our current travel trailer, which we are selling right now, it's 37 foot long, so it's long. Um, and yeah, just a normal driveway at our house here, there's no way. And there's no way to put it on the street or whatever as well. Yeah. The housing um, people would get upset, and the neighbours. Yeah, so our friend, like you said, in Durham, North Carolina, he has a big um, engineering business and he has a big lot, so it's just sitting there um, behind a locked up fence, which is cool. Yeah, which is great. But on the road, uh, we stored it a few times when we did city stays. We did San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. Uh, San Francisco, we stored it at a um, Thousand Trails. Yeah, yeah, great. Have you not heard of Thousand Trails? They're like a membership site. They can save you a lot of money on camp fees too. Yeah, Thousand and trails. some of the parks you can like dry store them. I think the term's called mm -hmm. where you you, you hook it up and you well you don't hook it up. You park it there in the RV park and you're not in it. And you're like, we were away for like a week in San Francisco. It was like 45 minute, maybe an hour's drive out of the city. But Which was well worth it. Yeah. I mean, it, it is what it is. San Francisco yeah. is pretty difficult to find storage. And there's a lot of RV people out there. And there's um, everywhere you look and ring up, like they're either booked out or they sound a bit sketchy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And you can, there are, um, like if you want to store in your local area while you're in your house or whatever, you can have a look at... Um, storage unit places mm -hmm. they sometimes have an area where you can store rvs as well so we did actually phone around to a few of them when we first came back there were none available but thankfully our friends could help us out yeah like the you know you see places that store boats and trailers and um trucks and big rvs and stuff like that um even some u-haul places that are big enough mm -hmm. can be an option but yeah like i said it's getting harder and harder to find a place because the industry is just booming and thanks to COVID, I think it's going to boom even longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, yeah, so Portland, we did a similar thing. Stored it at, um, is it a thousand trails? I can't remember. No, um, campsite in Columbia River. Yeah, but in Seattle, thankfully, we had a friend who had a big property across the water and we could store it there and we caught the, the ferry over mm -hmm. to the city. So that worked out pretty cool. Yeah, loads of options available for you. So the next question from this person, how often do you need to empty the toilet cartridge when you're using her 24 seven? And can you ask people at caravan parks to do it for you? Can you <laughs> how pay often? Them? Well, I would might, be paying them if it was me on my own. Might depend how many coffees you consume because <laughs> if anything like me, what a coffee <laughs> does. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it just like, is it, are you just solo, your couple, how many kids you got? Like depends. How many times are you using well, the toilet? Well, let's just share what and, we were um, doing. I the mean, other thing is, yeah, you don't have to flush it every time. Like, what's the saying? If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. There you go. <laughs> um, God, how often were we dumping? Like, well, I mean, if you're staying and they mentioned caravan park, and in saying caravan park, I feel this is from an Australian. Australian yeah. But if you are staying at a caravan park, I know in the US, it's usually you pay a bit extra, so that's where the pain comes, but it's hooked up straight to the dump thing to at your sewer. campsite, to the sewer. Yeah. So you just open up the thing and let it run out. Um, so you don't have to worry about touching it or anything. And then we, we had a pretty much what the rules that we followed if we were staying in a caravan park. We would just use the park facilities. So then we as wouldn't, much as, as much as possible. So then we wouldn't have to, because I don't like cleaning a toilet or a bathroom. So then we wouldn't have to dirty it. We wouldn't have to dump as much. Uh, so I think if you're staying at caravan parks, I would look at doing it that way. Mm. And then if you can reduce your reliance on it, then you probably won't need to change the cartridge. I'm not sure if it's different to over here, but 
we just call it dumping over here. We didn't have toilets in our um, travel trailer in Australia, so we never had to kind of deal with that. We had to use the caravan yeah. facilities. It's all, all we but had. If you have caravan a, park facilities. a bathroom on board in your RV or you're um, set up in Australia, um, yeah, use the park facilities, much, obviously in the middle of the night. Actually, do you remember our friends in Australia had that car? There was a thing that they pulled out and then they had to go and take that and dump it. They didn't have the hose set up like we yeah. do here. Yeah. So it is. So I think with one of those, if you're using the toilet, you'd have to do it every few days. Yeah. 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 But if you're boondocking as well, well then you, you, you have to plan for that because you have to realise how much typically if you... Once you start the travels, pay attention to how often you're having to dump it because if you're mm. boondocking, you have to know that. Yeah, we every time Otherwise we went boondocking before we set up at the boondocking, we'd find somewhere to dump. So we went into boondocking with an empty tank. Mm -hmm. um, we also had a portable, um, what's the name of the thing? That you'd portable put, dumper. Portable tote thing, isn't it? Yeah, on I don't know, but if you got oh, stuck, man. you'd dump it into that. <laughs> yeah, and that had quite a few gallons. Um, but yeah. And then, then you, you just dump it. that at the dump station yeah. along with what was in your tank. But yeah. there was, and again, you can, I think Campendium might help you with this if you're in the US, but you can research places where you can dump some for free. So some service stations may have facilities where you can go and dump there for free. But others, you may have to pay. Like sometimes we pay five bucks to dump. You yeah. can sometimes do it at state parks Gas and they'll stations. charge you. Not, well, service stations in Australia, gas stations in yep. the US, they're talking about. But yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's looking, Craig did it. <laughs> Not me, he did it. But you get, it's messy work, I guess, but you get yeah, used it's to it. It's a bit stinky and messy, you know. Put a peg on your nose, put some gloves on, you'll be fine. Hmm. All right, uh, trailer versus RV. Did you opt for a trailer because of the car seats for kids? That's an interesting question. No, but we did go trailer. into this a little bit in those previous episodes, the pros and cons of travel, mm. um, a bit more in depth there, while we did chose, uh, choose the trailer over the RV. But it wasn't really over car seats. No, we well, one of the hardest. Oh, well, ours don't have car seats anymore. Maybe that's why. No. They're one of the hardest kids. things was figuring out how are we going to do the US because we plan because we were away for pretty much a year. Um, whether we towed a travel trailer, which we did in Australia, I didn't want to do that again. <laughs> so I don't, I don't really like towing things and parking them and unhitching and stuff like that. But um, whether we did a travel trailer or we did a motorhome, a Class C, or we did a Class A and towed another small vehicle, yeah, it's hard to figure out. Again, it's like your style, how long you're away for, what part of the country you go to. But in the end, we decided to tow a trailer so we could unhitch it and have more freedom and just drop. We had a F-250 truck. Mm -hmm. We could just use that as our getabout vehicle. Um, yeah, but it's one of those things. A lot of people go through all yeah. different types and they're still figuring still, it out. Exactly, that is. And we, On the we've side, done again, that too. Like the size of your family, how old your kids are, um, the length of the, the rig and stuff like that. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's there's not no, perfect. There's no perfect situation for anyone. Um, I, and I think, and we mentioned this in the episode of pros and cons of RV travel, if we were to do it again, I think we would go the RV and tow a smaller car. A Class A, yeah. which is the big bus Buses, type motorhomes. Yeah, the bus one. Yeah. Um, um, I think yeah. we would do that. Like we would do one of the gigantic ones, one that was just enough room, and then we would tow a car that we yeah. could zip around in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was the cost per month to travel down? A breakdown would be great. Now, as I mentioned, we did the weekly wrap for the first 23 weeks. After that, I just couldn't manage it anymore. <laughs> it was just a little too crazy and I kind of just wanted to enjoy the trip as well. Um, but so you can go and check out and it's quite diverse with the different experiences we had mm -hmm. when we were boondocking, when we weren't boondocking, when we went into the cities, when we were out in Utah where we weren't spending much. So you can see the breakdown there. But I just grabbed some quick figures for you. Um, Ooh, so out. I did it as a per week. Crunch the numbers. Um, so we'll crunch the numbers per month for you. So it ranged, if we were having a great week where we weren't spending much, like if we were out in Utah, we were boondocking, we were just going to national parks and state parks, we weren't eating out or anything like that. On average, it was around 700 a week. Um, we tend, and we mentioned this in the previous episodes, we tend to do more because of 
uh, our business, our blog, because we report more on it. So therefore, we tend to spend usually more money, especially when we go in cities. Yeah. Like so the, be aware of that. Yeah, the tendency, especially when you first head out on the road, like you want to see and do everything. Every yeah. attraction, every yeah. activity, eat at places and check out new restaurants and cafes and stuff. So you can churn through the cash pretty quick. You really can. And until you figure out your style and you know, like you're seeing your bank balance go down, you're yeah. like, Ooh, we better figure out another way. on the brakes. But, Let's go start, to Utah. <laughs> start focusing on as many free things you can do as possible and more nature-based stuff. And Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, it comes down to your travel style, your comfort levels, your interests, the length, on, length of the time of your trip. Um, yeah. I hate to say variables and depends. But it is, but it's it true. It's That's why we don't like to say too much because I know the way we spend money is so different to others. But mm. So that was a good week, around 700 a week. So say 3,000 a month. But then on a busy week, and especially if we're out near the cities and doing a lot and eating out and wine tasting and breweries and all of that, um, we could spend up to 2,000 a week. Oh, so that much. Yeah. <laughs> See, it doesn't track the numbers I do. So he wonders why I panic about the spending. Uh -huh. So it could go up to 10000 Now, I was looking. Uh, I saw someone ask this question in an RV uh, forum recently. And what do people spend a month? And a lot of people did jump out and say that they do spend around 5000 to 10000 a month. 10,000. I know, I was shocked. I thought we were spending that much because we were wow. going to San Fran for a week and we were going to LA for a week. And uh -huh. so you do spend a lot of money when you're in those places. Yeah, that's But I a, was really surprised. 10,000, that's a sizable budget. Like, how big is their family and what are they doing? <laughs> well, but you think about when you have fuel and if you're towing something, mm. you, you're churning through the fuel. And if you're in California, get used to double fuel prices. It's ridiculous. I guess, yeah, groceries, out, groceries gas, activities. I mean, yeah, two, still two and a half grand a week. That's like, wow. Um, but you know, that's probably top limit. That was top, That's what I was saying. That was a week in San Francisco. Oh. We spent 2000 Oh, like, no, that but was you're the saying the people top. said 10000 They're spending 10000 a month. It's like, wow. Well, 10000 a month? But, well, if we spent 2000 a week and if you're going... Wow, 10000 a month, the RV lifestyle. I know what I'm doing with that. I'm going yeah. on some kick-ass vacations. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're listening and you're from Australia, um, I don't think you're going to spend anywhere near that because most of Australia is outback. <laughs> like, most wow. of Australia is not in the city areas. But when you go to the city areas, it's going to be expensive, guaranteed. Yeah, but saying that, we did a lot of our 18 months around the seaboard. And yeah, Australia's not cheap. No. It's not cheap to eat out, not to drink. Um, attractions and stuff it's yeah. pricey yeah it is so i run a bunch of figures do a bit of research you can check out those posts that we have on our site already just to see and and to get an idea of yeah, what you can it might spend, cost you apparently you can spend ten thousand. you can spend very little just hanging out for a week doing nothing mm. if you're happy to do that but some other things uh fuel i i took an average around 150 a week we did have a ford 250 that ran on diesel though so and we were towing a 37 foot trailer um so you may not spend that much fuel was expensive for us um laundry usually Especially around 12 dollars a week in death valley when it was six dollars 25 a gallon oh, a gallon fill up before you go <laughs> in the national parks that was crazy yeah. And groceries, we spend more than, maybe more than what other people might spend because we do look for organic and we have a lot of like supplements and stuff that we take. Yeah, we, uh, well, we, we, can be a little we stocked up, you know, we stock up at that. Costco and stuff like that, like Whole Foods when we can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so that's a general idea for you. Ho hopefully that's helpful. Um, but yeah, definitely do your research so you can adjust and see how it will fit with your lifestyle because everyone is really different. Um, as you Next question. As you drive, do your kids do a lot of crafts, read, watch mu movies, or does it get m monotonous and less exciting the more you do it? They do a lot of whinging. Does the novelty of being <laughs> in the RV wear off for kids? Well, we didn't have the RV as such, so we just had the car. Um, I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they ever got bored of watching movies and stuff. They they're really good now at entertaining themselves. Yeah, well, you know what kids are like these days and their gadgets and stuff and games and they're kind of addicted more than we'd like to yeah. their devices. But um, yeah, there's always something for them to do. But yeah, they're pretty they, good at entertaining themselves. I yeah, think. plus we were, school, we were schooling them on the road as well, so they had some schooling stuff to do in the car while we we're moving around uh, in the truck. Um, that was the easiest place for us to do it, and and mm. we had the rule that. 
it, they couldn't go on their devices or anything until their schoolwork was done. Sometimes they didn't get on their devices because yeah. they wanted to complain for two hours to do 20 minutes of work. Uh, yes, yeah, so when we started on our road trip around Australia, Savannah's very highly energetic. We were 15 minutes into it. She's throwing Vegemite sandwiches at my head and trying to escape out of the car <laughs> seat. So we knew, I mean, she was only two at what the time too. Yeah, yeah. So we knew we, at that stage, we started, we'd only drive two hours max at a time because that's all she could handle. But by the end of the trip, she could do six hours at a time. Yeah, that's when you turn the stereo up really loud. <laughs> I can't hear you. Drown out the noise in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but she do get used to it. You can bring in fun games. I know one stage, Savannah was not, I think she was trying to get the device and I wouldn't let her have it. So she was relentless. Mom, I'm bored. Mom, I'm bored. And so I said to her, um, I've changed my name and, and I can't answer you if you don't use my name. And so you're going to have to figure out my new name. And so then this turned into a game. That could be dangerous. No, it turned into a game that went for like nearly two hours where they were seriously trying to guess my new name. And then we would, okay, I'd give them a clue. It starts with X letter and then until they guessed it and then we'd start all over again. So you can do fun things like that, I think. Mm. Spontaneous things the kids will really remember and be I don't entertained remember, by. It. I don't remember that game. I must have been zoned out in my driving. No, I was driving. Oh, you were, you driving. were zoned out sleeping. Oh, come on. I drove the whole time. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay, next question. No, this was, oh, sorry. This wasn't in the RV. Oh. This was when we were traveling with my mum and dad. Ah, yeah. okay. Was this was road tripping like... in a minivan with my parents. This game. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Different road trip, but still a road trip. Oh. Uh, okay, next question. How easy, well, this is for you, Craig. Oh, this is really coming, this is segued very well into this question. How easy what? is it to drive or maneuver? Ah. Drive or manoeuvre? Well, again, depends on the length and the size and the height and the weight of the rig. So I had some previous experience in Australia towing our little, we had a little Jayco pop-up camper trailer. The length of that thing was like, it was under 20 foot. Tiny. I think it was like 12, <laughs> 17 foot maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a learning curve in learning how to tow. Um, you can watch a lot of YouTube videos online, which are helpful with some handy tips. And I guess one of the obvious things is the height of your trailer. You don't want to take it under an overpass or a bridge that yeah. you're going to rip the top of it off. We almost got stuck once and we had to stop quickly and do like a, what you normally be a three point turn, but it's like a 10 point turn just to get out of And we're starting reversing 10 point Cutting turns. across traffic, people are like, stress, let me through with all that stuff. But, um, but usually you can you can set, um, um, set your um, navigation system to avoid um, like overpasses and heights and stuff like that too. Technology is pretty cool. But um, and trees, watch for trees. And trees, too. yeah, trees or awnings like on shop fronts or poles leaning in. Like yeah, if you're on the, if you're in the lane that's close to the the sidewalk or the footpath in Australia, you want to be careful like with trees and power poles and awnings and stuff like that, but don't take off the top part of your rig as well. Yeah, our friends lost their awning from that. Yeah, it just made me yeah. remember when we were driving our Class C motorhome in South Australia, I pulled into a, a small town to get a coffee or whatever, and yeah, there was a tree. And I, you, know, you just forget like how high the thing is. Mm. And I did a massive gouge right down the side of it. This was a rental. I'm like, oh no. So yes, it's easy to do. It's easy to do. It's hard to keep your concentration. Like if you're on the road for a long time, you forget sometimes. But mm. yeah, so be mindful of the height. Um, the sway too. The sway, obviously, is one thing we're worried about. The sway, like obviously, crosswinds are very dangerous. We had um, like the the bars, the um, the sway bars. That was and the thing we were most worried about, and we yeah. we were going to buy a much smaller travel trailer because we were most worried about this way because we had heard how bad it was driving over yeah and um and we and i don't know and then we ended up getting the the larger one with the truck and i don't think it was as anywhere near as bad as what we thought it was going to be no well obviously Must the thing to keep in mind as well with the size of the trailer like you need a, a truck strong enough and powerful enough to tow it so weights are very important um as far as dangerous insurance if something goes wrong um so yes yeah, so you want to make sure your truck has the capacity to tow ball weight to tow the size and the weight of your trailer. Very important. 
because um, that can be dangerous as well. And you stopping, don't, you got to know about stop, stopping. I was just going to say stopping. I wasn't so worried, so much worried about towing up a hill, but or a mountain, but going down a mountain with a very heavy trailer behind you, and you have to stop suddenly because of whatever or wet weather. You want to make sure that your truck is powerful enough to stop that trailer from, you know, pushing you through a stoplight or pushing you through someone else's rear end. Mm -hmm. um, very dangerous. So that was my most concern, not going, but being able to stop in a hurry. Not even just going down a mountain, but just in general. Mm. Like if you're cruising like 70 miles an hour and all of a sudden you got to stop, you want to be able to stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Plus turning corners as well, you want to give yourself enough room, make sure you got your mirrors positioned correctly and stuff like that, but um, just just find somewhere to practice where there's less traffic and there's more open space and just do little test drives and stuff like that. I you don't want to so. be like, you don't want your first try to be driving through like downtown. Like in no, a busy, or up a mountain. Or a busy city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, baby steps, like learning to walk and riding a bike, baby steps. Yeah, good advice. Next question, what about bathrooms? Would you feel claustrophobic? <laughs> well, we spoke a little bit about that um, before and the fact that we would use the facilities instead of the, the travel trailer bathroom. Um, it did feel a little claustrophobic actually, but you get used it's, to it. Well, it's stuffy. And yeah. Stuff and stinky. Yeah, yeah stuffy but... and stinky. So I would just recommend only use it when you really need to and you have no other option. So if you're staying somewhere where there's uh, campground facilities, Go and use their amenities or use uh, like national parks, state parks, yeah. attractions that you're visiting, all of that. Use them as much as you can. I mean, we had a shower in our trailer over here and we barely we used barely it. We barely used it. And no. like what most people do with their showers, they use it for storage. Yeah. <laughs> But, we um, did. We had an outdoor shower, which we really wanted to use uh, more, but we could because of the weather. Here we go again. <laughs> so there you go. Use the, the um, and we spoke about this in I the got, Like I think, we did, I, I know remember we did it, well, I can't remember where it was now. Um, might have been somewhere south in Texas in the early days. And it was hot and we did an outdoor shower on the hose down. It's like, oh, how good is this? This yeah. is awesome. And it just takes me back to days in Australia. Like you're at the beach, you get out of the ocean and you have a shower outdoors and stuff like that. It's just, and then, yeah, mm. that was it. <laughs> yeah, crazy. And we did speak about this in the previous um, bit, episodes as well in that you get used to not showering every day, perfectly fine. And if you're boondocking, you tend to look for places like um, mm. swimming pools or sometimes you can pay, uh, pay a fee for a camp, local nearby campground to go and use their uh, mm -hmm. shower facilities and stuff. Yeah, jump in the lake if it, unless you freeze your ass off, so yeah. Yep. Well, that's not too bad if you want a nice wake up. Okay, mm. next question. What would cost savings be as compared to booking hotels and renting cars, especially for road trips? This is a mm. tough one to answer. Cause yeah, it's a little tricky. Um, good question. It depends how many people and like you can share you can get like vacation rentals that have three or four bedrooms and if you can split the costs with mm. say another family or whatever it can be quite cost effective um hotels probably more expensive particularly if you got more than four people in your family you need two hotel rooms mm. typically um and again it depends on the destination whether it's a big expensive city or it's like a smaller town or a beach town uh it's tricky. It's, it's kind of hard to answer. Um, yeah. Time, the time of year, the season, where there's any festivals on. Like, it's, again, that word variables. I um, think this probably sounds like I'm saying, thinking an Australian coming over here maybe because they're renting, talking about renting cars as well. Okay. Um, so that might be an idea of where you might want to look more at maybe a motorhome so you get the car and the... Um, uh, RV, the hotel kind of in the one. You can yeah. also do camping. Craig and I, before kids, we drove across the country from east to west in just a minivan. And so we camped um, with our tent. We had a tent or we slept in the back of the van. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was a really great way to travel. We didn't have kids, so it was very different, but we saved, it made it very affordable yeah. just sleeping in the tent. Yeah, okay, I was just thinking like, Aussies flying over to the US and typical trips that they like to do, like within California and stuff, and, and like that um, common route like LA, San Diego, Vegas, Yosemite, San Francisco, then down the Pacific coast. Um, probably a rental car, and then like vacation rentals, the odd hotel, 
cabins, stuff like that, probably be sufficient. Yeah, I think if they're coming um, over for a shorter period of time, I yeah. think the RV stuff, I think it'd be too much work, yeah, to be totally. honest. Yeah, because you're moving around quite a bit, you're active. Like RVs, kind of like you're heading more open spaces, longer period of time, you want to relax. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's tricky, depending on your, your style of travel, obviously, your length of travel, what state whether you want to combine it with national parks, state parks, hiking, with city stays, or just do one mm. or the other. Um, and I think, think the about. longer you travel, the better the RV option would be. Well, I think that would stretch your costs both. over you can and make break it better. It up. Like, um, we do have content on our site that will help you save money on accommodation mm -hmm. and save money on rental cars. And we'll put that in the show notes in the description. So people can have a look and do a bit of research that way. And we just recommend running the numbers, um, looking at the different styles of accommodation and the costs of that, and then seeing what it would be, uh, what it would cost you if you were to get your own RV set up. Yeah, or I mean, rent an RV. you can get some pretty good deals. I mean, the US is um, built for road trip um, uh, vacations. I mean, like think of all the motels, the, the suites. You can get good deals. Out. You can get good deals, particularly well, here's the thing, depending on the state or the city, whether it's there's business travels or leisure travels, like midweek can be cheaper or weekends can be cheaper. It just depends on the destination. You can get some pretty good deals. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would think, yeah, re obviously research the states, the cities you're going in the time of year. Um, one thing I just remember, I remember talking to somebody who rented a, a Cruise America motorhome and they're not that cheap, they can no, add up. No, they cost a fortune. Somewhere. They can add yeah. up. I mean, so you could just rent a sedan rental car and stay in a decent three-star hotel, motel, whatever, and do it that way with more comfort without having the time to setting up and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, and for t the people that are spending 10000 a month in the RV lifestyle, you can do an awesome trip yeah. in the US for $10,000. You can. Uh, and if, I mean, if you're incorporating cities on that trip too, yeah. you won't need a car. So you could come in no. to a city not have the car, do what you do there, stay in a hotel, and then rent a car to go to other areas. So you could split the cost up that way. Or get a cheap way. flight if you're just doing cities. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. lots to think about. There are lots of options to the fun of travel planning. Um, what things do people not tell you about that you found out the hard way? We kind of shared this, I think, in the previous episodes about uh, whether we found it worth it or not. I think the things that we, I think people may have told us or we kind of knew but didn't really realise how mm -hmm. much it would impact us until we got on the road. I think the two things for me, for US, one, the weather, that <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't... How did I know you were going to say that? I can't that? even. Like, it makes a difference. It really does. Well, okay, for us it makes a difference. So one was the weather. We like, we're Aussies. We like heat. Yeah. We like warmth. We love the outdoors. And good weather obviously suits the outdoors Yeah. Better. Yeah, exactly. Like and then two, I think, was the fact that the US is so big and has so much to do. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge to get everything you wanted to do done. And it meant that it was really intense, like busy, busy, busy. It's hard to be yeah. everywhere at the optimal time of the year. It's impossible. It is. And I really remember is. before we started, like, um, Summer, summertime, everyone's like, don't come here in the summer, don't come here in the summer, don't come here in the summer. I was like, well, we've got to go Where somewhere. Where do we go? You can only go everywhere in the <laughs> yeah. summer. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, the great migration in the winter time for, like, you got people in the northeast, Canadians, they all flock south, like, to Florida mm. or southern Arizona and stuff like that. And the U.S. is a big population. That's the other difference from Australia coming to the U.S. There's a big population. There's a lot more doing There's more it. people in California than our whole country of Australia. And then there's the other 49 plus states. It's like, there's a lot of people. And um, I think I, I think in Australia, we could just lob up somewhere. I don't think we pre-booked anything in Australia. But over here in the US, you really, especially if you're going to the busy areas, you really have to book in advance, like several weeks in advance for some yeah. places if you're staying at a campsite or, or something. Even 12 months in advance. Yeah, if you wanna yeah. Stay, if you want to camp in like Yellowstone National Park or Grand Canyon or big bucket list items. Yeah, people book a them year, years in a advance. year. Because a lot of people just re repeat their booking and go back to the same place all the time. Yeah, uh, that was tough. I think that took away a lot of the joy of the flex the mm. flexibility of RV travel, which I think is one of its um, 
things that pulls you in is that you can have this flexible and freer kind of lifestyle, yeah. which I think is taken away if you really have to plan Yeah, the busy times in the US, like Memorial, Memorial Weekend, Labor Day Weekend, summer vac uh, 10 weeks, summer vacation, school time, spring break, like um, even Christmas and New Year's in certain places. Yeah, you really need to book months mm. and months and months in advance, even year advance. Like yeah. It's that popular. You do. Um, I'll just finish up by saying the other thing, like if you're running a business like us, homeschooling like us, and traveling mm. like us, it's Hard. not relaxing, it's full on. The RV lifestyle, it's not, I don't think it's a practical way to run a business and travel like that. It was very stressful. Um, plus the boondocking side of things, even on my days off, I've mentioned this in another video, we were staying in Moab, boondocking, even the days that we weren't doing activities, most of my day off, I was doing stuff with the RV, where it was dumping, getting gas, getting propane, doing laundry, showering the kids, running into town for groceries. It was like, this is not relaxing and not, I'm not productive on my business. So if you're like us, running a business, homeschooling your kids, traveling full time, yeah, it's, it's not all it's cracked up. It does bring in another element of work yeah. that you may may not really want in your experience, especially if you're traveling for the specific purpose of travel, exploration, adventure, etc. If you are jumping into the RV lifestyle because you want it as a lifestyle, like you want to live like that and move around and have a life that is like three months in Utah and three months here, then it's going to work much better for you and yeah. it is a really fantastic option. So just really consider what you want to achieve and why you're doing it and that will help shape the best decision for you. Yeah, we mentioned this on this video, like this might be your first big adventure. Well, we've done a lot of adventures and then we set out with a goal just to do this for 12 months, um, see, see what we could, get content for our business and stuff like that. But you might be selling your house and hitting the road for like five years. Mm -hmm. and doing this, you know, like this is what you want to do for ever, yeah. possibly. And then you'll figure gonna, it out what yeah, works. Yeah, you're going to travel in a different yeah. style than, than we did. But for us, what we wanted to accomplish, yeah, I got super frustrated and I was over it. Like, yeah, we got tired. We just got tired. And it was only mm. so much we could handle. Our, our energy could only handle so much. And yeah. It just couldn't take it anymore. But that was just the way that we chose to do it, which we learnt was... I wouldn't do um, that again. Filled yeah. with um, loops, not loops. Mistakes. Right. Any anyway, more next one. Last question. Last question. Okay. What was your favourite part? This is a good one to end on. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll jump in. Craig seems like he needs a bit of time to think, but <laughs> <laughs> my, my favourite part. Um, I just, I, I do love the. Uh, if you take away all the hard work and everything, I do love that lifestyle of just being really close to Mother Nature and out in the outdoors and just being able to pretty much step from your bed and you're outside and um, seeing the most beautiful scenery. You can be camping in the most extraordinary places and that's your backyard and it changes frequently. So I love how you can uh, be in Utah one day and then over in California the next and, and just kind of those more closer connections you have with mother nature. And of course, you know, campfires at night, you can hang around, cook, barbecues, drink friend, um, drink friends, drink with friends and <laughs> just kind of that really sort of slow, simple um, lifestyle that you can get from it away from the chaos and the, of the noisy kind of urban lives we all seem to live in. Mm. Yeah, I love the nature side of things as well. Um, the national parks were a highlight for me. Um, the hiking, waterfalls, mm. wildlife, like some of the wildlife over here that we don't get in Australia. So like Yellowstone was amazing. I love the waterfalls in Yosemite. Um, and some of the state parks um, were great as well. Um, yeah, nature definitely, being under the stars, hearing the sounds of nature, that's definitely cool. Yeah, that was really cool. I also like, I like all types of travel. Like I like camping in nature, but also I love cities and the energy and the craziness of a city and the attractions and stuff like that too. So I love San Francisco and I love Seattle and the food scene in Portland was good too. So I was just thinking then about that one night we had, I think it was in Utah when we were boondocking 
and we thought that there was like something on the roof of our RV and it kept us awake all night. We <laughs> oh, thought it was right. like a mountain lion or something. What the? What the? <laughs> I was like shaking the whole 37 foot travel trailer. And you could hear it Like running up above. and down and like, it was like I was trying to open things and like, <laughs> is someone trying to like get inside our trailer? It was like the Yeti or a mountain <laughs> lion <laughs> yeah. or something, but yeah. that you was get, hilarious. And there was one time, um, there was a light that kept flashing in too. It was like someone had a flashlight outside trying to peer in but it was like um it was Kalia reflecting something and then um i'm like do i go outside in the middle of the night and <laughs> see what's on top of our trailer like have a mountain lion jump on you vulnerable because i walk out the door there's only one exit and then they're above me i'm like okay yeah that was weird so we just stayed awake all night listening to it <laughs> yeah, i have no cool idea <laughs> that was in uh that was in grand escalante area, yeah utah yeah, yeah cool we so if you go there, there watch out for the <laughs> Crazy wild the animal or yeti. Or, yeah, spooky so, so you can person. you can have fun uh, moments like that. Definitely, mm. RV lifestyle does bring a lot more adventure into your travels, and you can end up with pretty cool stories. And as mm. we've always said, it's all a story to tell. If you can make a story out of it, mm. it's all about the memories. Accumulate memories and moments. Yeah, not just possessions. And we have a lot of. Uh, uh, mantras to travel by or what do we call it our manifesto ten, ten, principles, ten principles to travel by we just recorded a video on that so we'll leave yeah. a link to that in the description show notes go and follow it because I think you'll love it and if you follow those ten principles you will have a great time no matter where when how or who you travel with and nothing will go wrong absolutely nothing <laughs> ever <laughs> ever maybe sometimes <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for joining us and thanks for sending in your questions. We really hope that we have given you some useful advice Hopefully and been was. helpful. Yes. Just remember to pack but your don't listen, sweater don't and your raincoat. <laughs> Maybe don't listen to us. <laughs> no, no, listen to us. No, listen to us. Just pack your sweater and your raincoat, your Ugg boots, your dressing gown. Your flano. Ugg boots flano and your flano. In your Ugg boots. That's all you need. Your jumper. Your sloppy joe. Your Aussie. skivvy. <laughs> Because you might your, just... Your thongs. Be. Sorry, flip-flops. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Anyway, thank you Plug for sending them through. Send through more questions. We love to answer them. Just doing the moment kind of thing about any kind of travel. We're here to help mm. you as much as we can. As we said, we've been seen and done a lot. It's we'll have... not luxury travel, but... No, we're, we're working not on heading it. to that now, I think. We're working <laughs> we have links in the show notes and descriptions. More on RV travel, more on US travel, and more on travel in Australia so be sure to check them out as well mm. you can follow us on uh, YouTube somewhere Instagram Facebook <laughs> all at Y Travel Blog and our weekly podcast as well mm -hmm. which is the Y Travel Podcast yeah send us an email one on one if you don't want to be you know social media yeah and we won't if you don't want us to use your name we won't use your name so just send in your question alright mm. thanks guys we'll see you in the next video